What's going on at Dine Equity, the parent company of Applebee's and IHOP, with a stock that's a little bit more than just a three bucks off its 52 week low? Here's a company that reported an OK quarter earlier this month, but management has a plan to turn things around, and we want to find out if it'll work. When Dine Equity announced its results a couple of weeks ago, the company posted an 11 cent earnings miss off the consensus $1.69 basis, with weaker than expected revenues and some suboptimal same store sales, up just 1.5% at IHOP, but down 3.7% at Applebee's. We're used to better than that. Since then, the stock's down more than 5%. Although, to be fair, a lot of companies in the casual dining space have been having a rough time of it of late, and McDonald's has hurt the whole group, too. So what about the potential turnaround plan? Can this stock get its group back? Let's take a closer look with Julia Stewart, the chairman and CEO of Dine Equity, learn more about how our company's doing and where it's headed. Ms. Stewart, welcome back to Man Money. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Have a seat, Julia. All right, what is this? And I'm holding up. <laughs> Wood chips. What does this have to do with the potential turn? At so Apple's? you've got a sampling of fabulous, some uh, fabulous new products at Applebee's. But this okay. is just a sampling. All right. When I'm all said and done, this wood that is now in every restaurant in Applebee's in America is impacting about 40 percent of the menu. Literally, the flavor profile of about 40 percent of the menu. But here you've got a fabulous eight ounce steak, okay. right, that is now a choice steak, hand cut in the back of the house. You've got this brand new salmon with a fabulous dressing and you've got this fabulous pork chop. That's just the start of what you're able to taste at any Applebee's in America. Okay, how do you get the word out? Because I know that you are big in social media. Very big in social media. You name it, we're in it. Right. So starting Monday, we were on every major network. Tonight we do roadblocking in the network programming, and then obviously we're in social and digital. And literally, once people start hearing about it, they can't wait to go in and try it. And once they try it, they have a great experience, they want to come back more often. Okay, this costs more than what you were doing before. It is true. How can you still make your franchise So make money? here's the whole point of view. And remember, our franchisees are into this in a yes. big way because they believe it begins to change the story about Applebee's and eventually tr the trajectory of sales and traffic. Okay. So they have been incredibly supportive about not only installing and all the training that's gone in into this right. program, but truly believe it is worth going to a better stake because ultimately it's a more satisfied guest. So this is not about taking price point. This is about delivering better price value to our guests and a better product. Now, I know you got some urgency here because you talk in the conference call about needing to retrain management and staff yes. and that you're doing that right now. I mean, that's kind of like an all hands on deck thing. So we spent about $75 million in the new advertising, the new grills, right, and all of this training. So over 100,000 team members at Applebee's all got retrained, either in the back of the house, how to cut mm -hmm. or cook, and in the front of the house, how to talk about it. And what that's en enabling is not only pride factor, which has been like a wow, but literally talking about these new products in a whole new way. Okay, one of the things that I know you did, you had a, a, you had a campaign, hashtag better for you. Now, that, that does resonate with me, but apparently value resonates more than that. How, right. What's with the consumer? I, I think at the end of the day, and you know I feel that it's a little bit lumpy and bumpy. Yes. And consumer would tell you that it's not exactly where it needs to be, and maybe there are slightly more jobs, but it's not equating to you know higher disposable income. But at the end of the day, people want to go into an Applebee's and have a $30 experience for $13.75. And that's what we're able to do here, delivering price value in a whole new way with a better guest experience, better food, and a more educated food server and back of the house staff. Okay, now I notice IHOP, still positive comps, uh, has the uh, all day breakfast run its course at McDonald's? Has that been played out? So I think they're having an impact in breakfast. Okay. And I think at the end of the day, because of the amount of advertising they're spending, <sighs> They're pulling part of the share away. Our job is to spend all of our time and energy talking about the points that IHOP has that no one else, certainly in fast food, has. So about 85% of all the products at IHOP have some customization, right? Okay. right. And when you think about okay. it, we've been serving breakfast all day for 57 yes. years. And when you think about it, it's not a two and a half minute experience, it's a 37 minute experience with sit down service and an opportunity to get close to your friends and family again. So we got to make sure that we talk about the things that differentiate us. Okay. Uh, some of the things you're talking about, whether it be the retraining, whether I have labor. Labor's getting costly. I mean, look, I own a little restaurant. I got to pay this minimum wage. Minimum wage affected my the, the income from the restaurant. Right. How are you guys dealing with it? 
So remember that the average food server in America is making far more than minimum wage, okay. right? So yes. let's start with that premise and the reality that when you think about food servers making far more than minimum wage, in the back of the house staff never made minimum wage, right? The average cook is right. making probably 12, 15, 20 bucks an hour. It's less about minimum wage, it's more about compression and how are you taking care of those folks and what do we do for everyone in the restaurant when they start thinking about minimum wage. And we've really said, you know what, this is not about changing the labor equation, okay. this is about making certain our people are delivering a great dining experience. But yes, it's true that on the coast specifically, wherever the states have been that have said, let's go automatically, you have uh, literally franchisees charging slightly more, okay. but not such that it's out of whack with what the rest of the category or the industry is, is charging. Okay. It's the reality. Now, uh, guest enabling technology, you've been the leader. Can that help costs and also make the customer happier? In the short term, it's all about enabling guests to get the food when they want it, where they want it. So we just unleashed online ordering at Applebee's. We're looking at pay at the table technology in a whole nother way. We're looking at how do we enable that technology, whether it's, you know, whatever we're doing, it's all about how do we make the guest enjoy the experience that much more. So I think of it as an enabling and us testing it in every way we can, whether or not it ultimately helps labor in the front of the house to be seen. Back of the house could be some interesting technology. Okay, uh, last, uh, remodeling stores. I know that that's remodel every six years anyway. It's in your contract. Right. But every time you remodel, still better, right? Absolutely. Outside, they need to see it. And for us, the work that we're doing currently, which I'll show you the next time I okay. see you, is all about making it contemporary, making it relevant. But as you're driving by, you say, what's different? Well, I got to tell you, I was shocked to see your stock all the way down. But the fact is, the group is way down. Yeah. And you got to pick the winners. And I've always bet on you. Never bet against you. I love it. Thank you. It's Julia Stewart. She's the chairman, president, and CEO of Dine Equity. Guys, the stock is cheap, and these are iconic brands. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.